Marketing Your Private Practice is a podcast where you'll learn easy to implement tips and strategies to grow your business without spending all day online. I'm your host, Kathy Koliakovo, and I teach practitioners the Thrive Marketing Method to create simple and streamlined plans by focusing on long-term strategies, not just social media. Discover ways to spend less time on your marketing, attract more clients, and build the financial freedom that comes with a thriving practice. One where you have time left in your day for the people and things that matter to you. All right. Hey, private practice heroes. It's Kathy Koliakova with the Marketing Your Private Practice podcast. And today we are doing one of our free marketing reviews with Katie Baker of Pricing for Profit. Katie is a CPA, a CMA, and she specializes in cost accounting and pricing and helps business owners learn a system to save you time, money, and frustration while ensuring your business makes a profit. And I want to remind all of you listeners who are tuning in today that these reviews are free and they offer you a way to help your business and practice focus on a roadblock that's holding you back with your marketing and growing your business. So what you're going to get from a session like this as you listen in to us is exactly what we're offering Katie. Some first steps to take to move forward and start seeing the results you're after, reaching your goals. So Katie, welcome to the Marketing Your Private Practice with Kathy C. Podcast. Thank you so much, Kathy. I am so happy to be here. Great. And uh, I'm really glad you're here too, because we actually do know each other from, you know, we've been in a networking group probably for the past almost four years now, I think it's going on. The Center for Women in Business, which is an organization here in Nova Scotia, and shout out to the CWB because they help so many women business owners all over. And from those networking sessions, I have a little background about you. And I understand a bit about your business, but why don't you tell our listeners a little bit more about what you do with your pricing for profit business and the main service you offer your clients? Okay. Yes. I am a CPA CMA. I um, embarked on getting my accounting designation later in life after, you know, some very interesting positions. I was executive director of couple of nonprofits. I um, had my own business. I worked in government, many le- you know, provincial, municipal, crown corporations. I had a very, feel like a really esteemed and career I was grateful for that I learned a lot from all of the clients. And one thing that came up again and again was how mystifying, frustrating financials are for business owners entrepreneurs, uh, startups, nonprofits, social enterprises. I mean, the gamut would love to have a CPA look at their financials. Love to have someone, you know, with a critical eye say, hey, did you think about maybe reallocating your costs in this way or reorganizing them that way? But the thing about accounting is that there is compliance, there's tax, which is not analysis. It's really just making your numbers fit for CRA and at tax time. And that is often misunderstood as, well, my accountant did my books. He didn't, she didn't say anything. Well, what did you ask them? So my work is really a deep dive analysis into cost recovery, making sure you've added a profit margin, that you are paying yourself a a salary. It's about planning your operations, what is the capacity of your business? So it really it dips into your operations, but we do this to know how to recover your costs. We coach around tracking. Tracking is so key. Each quarter, where are you in terms of that revenue model we built together? And then tax guidance. I it's it would be leaving kind of the excuse me, the icing off the cake if I didn't tell you that this is also an amazing tax deduction. Business use of home, business use of vehicle. Many accounts are like, no, you don't have a quantified, probably doesn't mean that much. It is a good you know, tax deduction. There's other expenses that you might not think are tax deductions that are good for you, good for your business, and are tax deductions and are a good investment in the longevity of being an entrepreneur. Cool. Okay. And where are you located too? Let us know. Uh, I am located, most of my work is virtual. I live in Nova Scotia. I live also part-time in 
Ontario and Toronto. Uh, so I go back and forth, but honestly, I have clients all over Atlanta, Canada, the U S and yeah, some in Ontario as well. Okay. Cool. Most of the work is virtual, very easy to, Oh, sorry. Got clients out in Vancouver. Most of the work is, uh, very easy to do, even if we were in the same city. It's right. just so easy to hop on a virtual, um, you know, like right. this platform or or Zoom or whatever. Cool. So one thing that I didn't realize, so you work with U.S. clients too? Yes. Okay. So your knowledge kind of crosses the border to help with people down there. Cost accounting well. in terms of organizing your numbers for cost and cost recovery yeah. and profit margin and coaching. So although I can also understand, so I I am also a U.S. citizen and I do, you know, my own U.S. taxes as well as a Canadian, as a U.S. citizen, you are obligated to. But I tell people I'm an accountant. You might have heard this phrase before. I am a, you know, an accountant, but I'm not your accountant. So I can advise you on and I can coach you on the organization of your numbers. But um, tax is not a service I presently offer. Right. In either country. to Americans in either or country, Canadian. either country. Okay, awesome. Okay, that's good to clarify that. It is good to clarify, <laughs> but some people are like, "You're leaving so much of the work on the table." I actually coach a lot of entrepreneurs. We have organized all your numbers. This would be very easy for you to do on a tax uh, platform. So I can coach them, and and then you can take ownership of that journey. No one's going to look after your own numbers like you are. Okay. Awesome. I'm really glad you did that detailed intro because that gave me some more ideas from from your question that you had about this. So now I'm going to ask you again a question. I want you to tell our listeners who you are, what services you offer, and how you help your clients and what change it makes for them in their life. I'm putting her on the spot, everybody, just so you know, and I'm doing this on purpose based on what we just talked about here. So who I am. Yep. We all know my name, so I don't have to repeat my name. Uh, So I... um, You've got a soapbox. Say your name again. Okay. My name is Katie Baker, Pricing for Profit, Inc. I just incorporated I am a CPA, CMA, so I'm a professional accountant, and cost accounting is my niche. I am also, which I neglected to say last, uh, then I'm also a CITP, a Certified International Trade Professional, which makes working with clients an added value of offering um, exporting intelligence guidance, especially into the U.S., because I am familiar with both markets, U.S. and Canada. Okay, so that is who I am. I am the mother of three amazing daughters. <laughs> I don't know what I have a cat. No, okay. What was the next? What question? services do you offer people? The services is pricing, ensuring that you are recovering your cost to price for profit. Okay, and what does that do for your clients? Is very empowering, very empowering. I think the number one thing I see is such relief. Right. I did not understand this. You made this so easy to understand. I was so confused. I was frustrated. I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning. I was ambushed by doubt because I didn't know what I was doing because I wasn't tracking the numbers. And you have made this very clear for me. Thank you so much. Right. That is what okay. I hear from my client. But you don't do their accounting? I don't. I don't do their taxes. I do not do their books. Sorry, I was a little strong on the, I do not do their <laughs> books. Uh, I know. Okay, so here's the reason I'm asking, because one of the, what you wanted to talk about on your review today, specifically, and these are your words, I do very little marketing now, but would like my website to be marketing ready within the next few months. So what does that mean to you to be marketing ready? Hmm. That's a big question. You're supposed to tell me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. I can't tell you if I don't know what you're thinking no, first. Exactly. Exactly. So I'll tell you a little bit about just not to backpedal too much. In the work I do as a CPA and, and like any other CPA, we went through rigorous education. So we're the expert around numbers. Well, you as the client hold the numbers. 
And that's where the pain point is, is you have the numbers in your bank accounts. This is private, you know, proprietary information. It's your numbers. It's your costs. And we're the account. We can't analyze them unless we get them from you. So I've created a system that helps with that. And I'm now creating a platform that will help with that, even in more of an intuitive kind of format. So when that platform is ready, I want my website to reflect the power of the work I do. And that's what I mean by marketing ready. I don't, I think my website is wordy. Okay. I think it probably doesn't have the right words. Okay. And I want to be, you know, I do share it now because I think having a website is like having a business. You know, like this is my website. Yeah. And for a while I did this work, I didn't even have it. Yeah. That's, does okay. that answer the question? A little bit. And so here's my take on all of this from what you've just all go- went, gone through here and, and the words you've said back to me is marketing ready for you needs to have clarity of your messaging. Yes. And I'm going to pick on the CPAs out there right now. Um, You all have a lot of knowledge and you talk numbers. And a lot of times people are just going, whoosh, that all just went over my head. Because you get in-depth into it all. And most of the time, what those of us on the other side of the table are hearing is blah, 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 you know? And I'm going to be honest, when I asked you at the beginning, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and what you do and the kind of clients that you work with and the service you offer your clients, we got a lot of your history, okay? So one of the things you need to think about is how you can very concisely and with clarity tell people who you are, what you do, how you work with clients, and what happens to them when they do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to read back to you the intro that I gave you at the beginning, because I saw your head nodding when you heard me read that. So what I said was, Katie is a CPA, a CMA, specializing in cost accounting and pricing and helps business owners learn a system to save you time, money, and frustration while ensuring your business makes a profit. And those are words, I'm going to be honest, I took that line, I made up the word system. But the rest of it, I took off your website. Uh Okay. So one of the things that you need to do, especially because accounting and finances and numbers are scary as crap for a lot of business owners. So you don't need to be scaring them more with bigger (laughs) words like cost accounting and financials and cash projections and all of that. Very simply, you're Katie Baker. You own Pricing for Profit. And you help business owners reduce the frustration when it comes to their money, their books, and their finances so that they clearly understand what's happening, how to price their services so their business makes a profit. Amazing. Okay. You can go into it the way that you did. And honestly, the way that you did is is very interesting because I just had a group of Thrive Marketing Academy students start in July. And on the orientation call, we had several folks. I always give them an opportunity, you know, share who you are, how you help, what, who you help and what happens. And a lot of them went into their history like you did. When you have a moment, a highlighted moment, and you're on a soapbox. So right now you're going to be on the podcast here and you're going to be projected out to thousands of people through my email, my social media, all of that. The first time you can go into your history later, the first time you get that opportunity to say who you are, and this counts when you're in a networking room, when you're in a group like our Center for Women in Business where we network, and you get that 30 seconds, you get one minute to tell people who you are, even if you get two minutes. Stick to now and here of what you do, how you help people, and what happens to them. Your inspirational story of how you got there, how you notice people don't pay attention to this, how it frustrates them, it scares them, they're terrified of it, that can come later. But you want to lead with a very clear message. You are an accountant with special training, CPA, CMA, the international trade, whatever that part was that you said, and you help business owners learn a system that saves them time, money, and frustration all while they learn how to make their business make a profit. 
I have been struggling with that for a long time. Yeah. And it's just, you've got to make it simple for people to understand. And this comes into play with your goal of, you know, be marketing ready because you're going to need this kind of copy in your marketing on your website pages, in your Mm -hmm. social media, if you want to do any of that, in emails, newsletters, and even talking to people in groups, networking. Whenever you're having that opportunity to talk to folks, you want to make sure that they very clearly, without the details, understand what you can do for them. Because all they care about, Katie, is that you understand their problem. And what would you say their number one problem is? I think you said it with frustration. Frustration, fear. fear. I bet you for some people, shame, shame. is part of it because they haven't done things. They're hiding stuff. They haven't done taxes or Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. have a just a mess of everything. So you help business owners who have tons of frustration, fear, and shame when it comes to their finances and not understanding clearly how they can be a fiscally responsible business and make a profit. You teach them a system that makes it easy to understand, saves them time, saves them money, and actually helps the business make a profit. And the best part of all is they probably have a life now with a little more peace. They're able to sleep at night. They're able to feel like they know what they're doing when it comes to their money and when they're with their finances. Like you make life really great for those people that are probably extremely overwhelmed and terrified because they don't get the numbers and they don't understand that numbers game. Yes, absolutely. And what they say is, it's just, they feel like so now empowered and so re-energized to go out and do what they're right. passionate and, right. and their expertise. And because right. they can just lay to rest this layer of weighted like you say, shame or guilt or just the burden of all of it. Right. And for a lot of business owners, it's a heavy burden. It is. So you have to make sure that they understand you get their problem. Their problem is just a lot more than they're not making money. And you know what? They are so not alone. Every client is the same. Every client's the same. They are not alone. Right. So they want to know from your marketing, from your messaging that you understand their problem, that you have some expertise to help them. And then when you help them, like for a lot of people, it's just going to be weight off their shoulders, off their, you know, pressure. And frankly, it relates to things. I mean, most, most goals, when we look at businesses and coaching and the kind of services that you offer, ultimately people are looking to save time, money and, and make more money right? Have a better life, have more time in their life, have more time to enjoy life. That's similar to what I teach people is that you shouldn't be spending hours a day on marketing. You should be doing what you need to do, make it effective, make it efficient. And then you have time left in the day for what matters to you. So a lot of the end results will be the same, but, but people want to know from what you say to them, whether it's on your webpage content, whether it's on your social media posts, whether it's in a video that you put out there, whether it's in a newsletter, or whether it's words that you're saying to them when you have that moment to tell people who you are and how you help them. So getting clear on that. So I would encourage you to go back to this. There'll be a transcript of this on the website. So I encourage you to go back and look at some of the words that we said here and figure out how can you narrow down and get your one line offer statement together? How can you put that together? So when somebody says, hey, Katie, what's your name? And what kind of business do you have? And what do you do for a living? That you can tell them just like that, exactly what you do without going into, and I want you to promise me when you do this, you're not going to talk cost accounting and some of those. Other, I don't even remember the other words you said because they flew over my head. Revenue okay? model? Is it revenue model? Revenue models, cash flow projections. Like those are all words. I get that you love those words, but we business owners do not like those words. And those are like, those are like, you know, four letter words for us. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So that has to be key. And when you narrow that down, then putting the copy and the content and getting your website ready to be marketing ready is a little bit easier. 
because the message on your website should be matching what you do in your marketing messages too. Okay. So when I did look at your website, and for those of you listening in, you can find Katie's website at katiebaker.ca, K-A-T-Y-B-A-K-E-R.ca, right? Am I right on that one? That is correct. And I will have a link to all of that in the show notes as well. So in there, if you want to follow along, you can look there. But depending on when this goes live, she may have fixed some stuff before you (laughs) take a look at it. So one of the things that I look at here, so I'm always looking when I'm on a website, I'm always looking to make sure that when people come to the website and they come to your homepage, that they totally understand how you're going to help them. Like what is that, you know, one line statement of what you do and what you say and how you help people. So highlighted very top on your website is your logo, Pricing for Profit, and your name, Katie Baker. And then you've got these large words, like a headline there, price your businesses, products, and services so you can profit. So that's kind of like your, I don't know if it's your tagline, but I would call that more your your one-line offer statement or part of it. It's the transformation people get. One of the things that I found challenging in reading some of the copy is you you kind of use this, the businesses as an, I don't know what the grammatically correct way of saying it is, but you do it as a business, like as a possessive. So like Kathy's huh? pricing pain points, businesses price. It's hard to read. Like, honestly, it's hard to read. So I would encourage you to think how you could change that a li- little. Like, you don't necessarily have to say businesses. Are you putting that there for a keyword, maybe? You mean for like s- search engine? Yes. Yeah. So for me, price your products and services so you can profit. It means the same thing. You don't need the word business in there. It's kind of redundant. Gotcha. Yeah, no, and I know. That, and that's a good point. So I would kind of look at that, but from your homepage, so you've got this at the top, price your product, we'll say products and services so you yeah, can profit. Okay. And then you have, does your, you're trying to get in the problem here. Does your end, your end have you hoping, please let it be. Please let it spin and go, oh, lots of grammar mistakes Typo. there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix you. You'll fix that. Yeah. Please let it be a good year. Let it have been a good year. I'm not. Tr- I'm not sure which way you're going to say, it, but I know what you're trying to say. A good year. Oh, I don't know yeah. what I was doing. Thank you. And yeah. then you say underneath, profitability should never in brackets repeat. Never be guesswork when it can be planned. I I like that. I think that's good because I think for a lot of people they'll understand that. And then you kind of get into, have you thought about your financials and thought, I don't get any of this. It has to be my least favorite part of being an entrepreneur. I have an accountant, but they don't have any insights. I'm here to say, I've got you. We've got this move over confusion and hello, profitability. So I think that's really a good way of doing this and putting that in there because I think it lets people know that you've got this here. At this point, you've said, I've got you. Let's you know, we're going to move out the confusion and say hello to profitability. And then you get into this quote from Malcolm Forbes, right? (laughs) So like you had me and now you're making me think about a quote. So I would rethink that to be honest, because then after that you say, do you know that a 10% increase in pricing can increase profitability by a hundred percent? Let me show you how we work together, set your pricing to ensure value for your clients, profitability for your business. And the bonus of all this work is you'll become the master of your business's financials. I find that challenging that when you do that businesses, I'm not sure why it could just be me. Um, Pricing is the goal. Financial literacy is the journey. Profitability is the result. My guarantee to you. It doesn't say to you, but it probably should. So then you've got, how do you make this happen? You've got your business's profitability in just five steps. So do you work with a lot of solopreneurs or companies? I would say solopreneurs, yes. Is that your niche, solopreneurs? Well, I do work as an advisor with like entrepreneurial organizations and they tend to be made up of solo found founders. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. It, I mean, is it my niche maybe by default? Possibly. But that's where I would, maybe that's where you could replace that word businesses. Solopreneur? Yeah. So, well, not even that, but it's them. It's you. It's their profitability, right? It's... Oh, okay. Got you. Yeah. Don't leave it. Yeah. So, because your business is like, that's about another 
person, Someone but else. you like is you. about you and you're going to hit home better to me. But I would also clear that up. Your business is profitability in just five steps. Like make it an action part, you know, working with me, boost your profitability in just five steps, except we're going to make it three. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So, and here's the reason why. So when anybody, if anyone wants to look at Katie's website uh, right now, she's got five steps of how to do this. So step one, book a discovery call. And it's kind of little and doesn't have an explanation because it doesn't <laughs> need one. Step two, organization of your business's financials, analysis of your business capacity, ensure every billable hour and product sold contributes to profitability. Step three, build your profitable business model, the creation of your business's 12 month profitable revenue. Okay. These are all those words I was talking about earlier. I want you to think about taking step two, three, and four, like four is strategic forecasting. So that gets even more complicated to me. (laughs) The headache's getting worse. Step two, three, and four are your system, right? Ah, yes, it is. Are they not? Yes. Right. So one of the best ways to actually make you stand out in your own compared to other profitability experts out there is to offer people something nobody else teaches. When you join the Thrive Marketing Academy, you learn the Thrive Marketing Method to doing your marketing in a simplified and streamlined way so that you can thrive. I don't have to compete with others because nobody else teaches the Thrive Marketing Method. That's something I've created. The step two, three, and four look like your process with people, right? I would combine that. Step one, you book a discovery call. Step two, you know, we work together and, you know, using the system, there's different ways that you can word this. It depends on what you're going to call it, how you do it. But the reality is, and I think from what you're saying is you put some sort of custom plan for them. It's very unique for each one, maybe in what you're doing. If you work with them one-to-one, it is a system. It absolutely is. It's not, it's a, a, every client, notwithstanding their businesses are different and obviously right. nuances uh, stand out, but the system is the same because it works. Okay. So you have a pricing for profit system that you customize for every client you work with mm-hmm. so that when they get it into play, mm-hmm. they move to what you have as step five now, which is enjoying the empowerment and profitability of your business. Mm-hmm. You now understand your finances so you can direct and not feel helplessly dependent on your accountant. Mm -hmm. So if you took step two, three, and four and made it one step, that'll be all step two. And it's just, we work together and using following a proven system that's custom to your business. Step three is now you can enjoy the profitability you've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Very simple, very easy, and much more clear. I know for you it's not clear because you haven't given them all these big words and and the scary words of forecasting and cost analysis and capacity and all of that, that you can talk always to people about that, Katie, in a consult. You can get into that there. But on a homepage, you want to make it really simple and easy. One, two, three. What can you do? What about for CEO optimization, though, having those words that would grab people? SEO? SEO optimization? Should I say CEO? I was like, CEO opt. Is that another service? No. (laughs) It's it's another thing I do. Yeah, CEO. SEO. That is important. Honestly, you don't have SEO. That's one of my observations on your page. So you have a WordPress website. You have the Yoast plugin on it. I can see it, but you're not using it. So you do need to get some SEO on there. Yes. But part of that is understanding your message and the content you have on the website to know what you're going to say in the SEO. Okay. Because every page should have a unique title for SEO and a unique description for SEO. So for you, you have some of that here. SEO is 100% important, but what's actually more important is that when somebody lands on your homepage, they understand who you are, what you offer, and how it's going to help them. They want to know you understand their problem, you have a solution, and how to get started with you. Okay? You can put that on your services page. You can put, you know, we'll focus on, and that's where you have your you know, the organization of your business financials will focus on building your profitable business model. We'll focus on strategic forecasting. You can have all of that on 
the services page that might explain that service a little more. Okay. But here you want it simple. And you can have un- like underneath those boxes, you have book a free consultation, which is great. You have a call to action. And I'll just note, you don't have a call to action on your other pages and you need one. Every page has to have a call oh, okay. to action. Okay. So on your page here, you've got the book of consult, you take it there. You say, this will give us an opportunity to talk about your pain points, your priorities, and your goals of your business. So, and then you have a book now button, which is fine. Underneath there, you could have, like, I do feel your book of consult is important here. You, How do you get started and make this happen? One, two, three, and here's the link to book a call. Underneath that, you know, want more details about the services? Well, click here and go to our services page and we'll give you more details. And that's where you can go into what those two, three, and four items are. But with your, so on your page now, you have your services page and you have a QR code on there and you have your pricing for profit page. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of those two pages are, to be honest. I don't understand your services. Most people are going to expect you to tell me that we offer these services, like you can work with me this way, or you can work with me this way, or you can do this. And here's the services. On here, you're kind of explaining how pricing is formula-based and your business numbers are organized, you do this. So if that's part of the service you use, you want to just reword. Most people, when they go to a services page, what do they offer? Me, I offer one-on-one coaching. I offer the group program that I have. And I offer a free marketing review on the podcast. Those are my services, okay? On here, I don't really see that like understanding that. And so that's where some of those words you have on that homepage could fit here. And pricing for profit. So what's the purpose of that page? To explain what you do? She's looking at her website page now. I am. <laughs> I know, I am too. Um, I think you're trying to explain what pricing for profitability means. Yeah. It's kind of like if you yeah, simply no, pick a price you. for your products, is well, that what it is? Pricing, yeah, I think a little more explanation because pricing has traditionally sat, if you look at like how to price my products, you if you Google it, it'll come up with like, look at your competition, understand your strategy. It's not, it's more marketing based. It's more strategy based than financially based. And I'm explaining that pricing for profit work is really about, but it has been a little bit of time since I did this and I have reworded some of my, so okay. I can see an opportunity here. Yeah. To, right. to, okay. to have something quite different here. Okay. And what this should have on it, because you've got this at the very end, you say, I'm here to say, I've got you. We've got this move over confusion, welcome profitability, which is what you promised on the homepage. And I guarantee you this will work. will serve you and your business now and well into the future. I understand putting a pricing on your product or service can bring a variety of emotions. Let me assure you this worked. Our work together is what I would probably say. We'll put all of those aside. I guarantee this will be the best strategic move you make for your business ever. And then the page ends. No, so have a book consult. A hundred percent. All the action on every, every page, page, right? Okay. And I just, I'm looking at her in the video here because we're on video <laughs> talking to each other. And she's just sitting there kind of like, Katie's got these blank stare, look, you know, the deer in the headlights, like she's telling me something. I am, I'm telling you, you gave me all this stuff and then you dropped me off the cliff, right? So you want to give them that spot of, if this is what you're looking for, you know, make this happen now and have an action-based call to action button, you know, make this happen today for your business and click here and then send them to that page. Okay. And same with the services page. That one ends. It also sort of finishes. You've got pricing is formula based. I know you're going to change this, but right now when you look at it, it's like pricing for profit is optimally aligned for professional service providers, consultants, coaches, online brick and mortar retailers, production, manufactured, nonprofit, social enterprises, and then it ends. It ends again. So there's nothing after that. So you've got me again. I've read to the bottom. Give me a call to action and tell me what to do. Okay. There's two QR codes on your website. I don't know why. I forget why they're there. I don't know why they're there either, but I tested both and they go to an error page. So get them off. I don't know what their purpose is. Okay. Gotcha. 
The other thing that I would want to say, so we're really talking about here, getting some messaging together, messaging that you're going to put into the content on here. Because for me, being market ready means being able to send people to your website and have them know and learn and understand that you understand their problem, you have a solution and how to get started working with you so they can transform their life. Right now, your website is missing part of that. And do you think um, on website, like how overt in terms of what it costs to work with me? Is that something? So that is a challenging question. Do I put my pricing on my website? It depends how it comes about. For me personally, I I am like, I wish I knew what that costs. Yeah. And maybe that's because I do pricing, but you know what? Right. Well, and part of the reason is people want to make sure they're not getting people booking consults, getting calls who cannot afford the services. Yeah. So for me, it depends on your pricing. If you're getting consults and people are shocked at the price, I would start putting the price on so you don't get the calls. But the other argument is if you get them on the phone when they don't know the price and you explain the value of the fee and what it can do for them in the long run, because typically the fee people will pay will save them, you know, 10 times, 20 times more in the long run, right? So that's where you have to kind of play that game. And a lot of it will really depend on how often are people not, you know, balking at the price when you share. And if you're losing them there, then I would, you know, that's when you can put it on. Some people put an application form on and and put a little ticky box that says, you know, I understand that this service... I'm ready to invest at least $3,000 to make this happen or something like that. So you're not putting the price on, but it's there and it's kind of obvious. Oh, I like that too, yeah. Okay. Now, the last thing that I wanted to mention to you to get your market ready here is your contact page, which you don't have. I should get to, where's that? (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to reference you to, I think it's, I will double check, but I will let you know, I'm pretty sure it's, Episode nine is optimizing this one page on your website to book more consults. You need to have a contact page on your website. Right now, your contact page is sending them to your open Calendly, which is an online booking system, which has six different uh, types of options that they can book. And so you don't want to do that. A contact page for keyword and SEO reasons should repeat your name, the company, You should have some info at the top, you know, location, phone number, all of that. Never a live link to your email. You're just asking for your email to get caught up by the spammers and sold and you'll get spam email. So you have that on, I think, your Meet Katie page. So I would remove that and send them to your contact page. Okay. The contact page, you can have a button, book a discovery call right there that goes to your 15, 20 minute Calendly option. But you should also have where you're missing the boat here. You don't have a way for somebody to just send you an email from a contact page and say, hey, Katie, I was just wondering about the pricing or hey, Katie, I was wondering about blah, blah, blah. So you're kind of missing that opportunity to engage people who may want to um, reach out that way. A lot of people won't think to go to your Meet Katie page to find a phone number. So you kind of tick them off. They don't have time. They're like all rushed. They're nobody, you know, in this world of instant gratification. If they can't find a contact page, they may skip it. Yes. If your only option that you have is to book a call with you, that can be scary for some people. Maybe they want to ask a question. Well, first. it's actually, to be honest, it's kind of scary for me too. I, uh, yeah. So, cause if <laughs> yeah. I don't know them, I've gotten some weird, so yes, a contact page. Yes. Yeah. So I would definitely do that. And like I said, I, it's episode nine that will help you understand okay. what to optimize. Amazing. And I have a free PDF on there that you can download that tells you what to put in it and gives you some ideas too. Okay. 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 Do you want to share the, to get to your episodes? Yeah, I'll have that in the link to the show notes and okay, I'll give amazing. you that. Okay. So where we put the podcast, where it's live, it'll be there. Okay. But yeah, you, that is something and anybody listening in, if if your contact page only goes directly there, you actually could miss some opportunity. Some people may want to pick up a phone and call you. Like if they get on your page and they're desperate and they need that help right away, and the only way they can reach out is to book a call with you, they may skip the line. I've had people phone me all the time and become clients because I have my phone number there. You so do put contact your phone page number. needs yep. I do pay for a landline and I have for the entirety of my business and it's a cost so that I can keep my 
private cell phone free and private. Mm. So it's like a PO box, right? Mm -hmm. And business expenses you can deduct, Katie, right? Yes, indeed. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, so that's where I would sort of say for you to focus on is really you've got to get that messaging first because that's going to tie into what you put into the content on your website, into the content on your social media, all of it there. And I did take a quick peek at your socials um, before you start marketing. They're just non-existent. I know. They can help a lot, like LinkedIn in particular, even a Facebook business page, even though you might not get a lot of traction, both of them are well ranked in search engines and visibility. So if you meet somebody, you know, through a Facebook group, it's challenging to find you Mm -hmm. um, and Mm -hmm. connect with you on your personal profile. Even you can optimize it so they know how to reach your business, not you, but your business. And I have that in another episode as well on how to optimize your social media channels. And I didn't expect to reference that. So I will send, put a link to that in the uh, show notes too. But there's where you really, you know, Get that messaging down, how you can do it clearly and concisely to people without all the counting talk. Fix up the contact page, get some calls to action to book a call, to learn more about the services on your services page that will explain some of what you have, what you covered, like not thousands of words, but just some overview, like what you have in those boxes on the homepage. And then just make it really simple so that if they want to reach out and ask a question, they can, that type of thing. and. You're going to have to look and learn into, you know, get figure out the SEO part because you don't have any on there and you should get the pages all with a separate unique title for SEO and a description as well. And then once you've got this there, I always tell people flow through the website, like go on it and look through it. Um, Honestly, I tell people do the grandma test. If your grandma could get on the website or, you know, in case of us older entrepreneurs, our mothers could get on your website and understand what you do and be able to tell somebody how you help people and what you're doing, you know, you got it right. (laughs) Can you pass the grandma test? (laughs) But walk through it and see like on the homepage, what are the CTAs, you know, book a call or learn more about services. On the services page, you should have a book a call there. So you just want to make sure they always know what to do next if they want to work with you. Okay. So a little bit of optimizing there too, but you can do it. But it's for you, I think it's going to start with the messaging and then that's going to flow through with what you're going to do. And once you've got it there, then your website would be marketing ready when you optimize your social media profiles first and then go from there. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? So that'll get you started, I think. Yeah, no, that's a... (laughs) I can't wait to get the show notes and go step by step, yeah. (laughs) Thanks so much, Kathy. This has been amazing. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I do want to say thanks for being part of the podcast and opening up here. I know for a lot of people, they think, oh, she offers those reviews, but they're going to go on the podcast and I'm so scared and I don't want to talk to people about it. But it's not that hard, right? No, I mean, no, no. It's I... pretty straightforward. And I can tell you, I know there's other people listening that are in a similar boat that will be getting something just because you've shared some of your issues out there as well. And um, I just want to remind everybody listening in, you can get your own free marketing review as well. We offer five different types. We're usually looking at website, messaging, social media profiles, lead generation. And even if you want to walk through an article, a newsletter or a blog you've written, um, we can do that as well. And you can apply for your free review anytime at pepperitmarketing.com slash review. And again, All the links to that will be in the show notes here, including how you can connect with Katie. But Katie, why don't you share with our listeners how they can find you online, how they can connect with you? Because I know there's probably some people thinking here, hmm, I'm wondering if Katie can help me boost my profits. Mm -hmm. So let us know where they can find you. So the website is katiebaker.ca and it's K-A-T-Y-B-A-K-E-R. I am... Katie Baker, um, you know, you should be able to find me pretty easily. And through messaging there, I have a premium account, so you can message me there really easily. I am a member of CWB, so I have a little bit of a page in CWB's um, membership profiles. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I actually did have a bonus tip for you. So number one, when you get all of this ready, 
you should at the bottom of your website have links to those social media profiles. Okay. okay? Because then when you're in an opportunity like this and someone says, how can we connect with you? You say very simply, find me at katiebaker.ca. And at the bottom, you can find links to all my socials. Very easy, simple to do. Again, clarity out there and makes it easier because sometimes people are trying to think, oh, well, you find me at linkedin.com slash in blah, slash blah. Katie O Baker, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But I do want to mention to you when I was looking at your LinkedIn, you have a website link on there. I think you have a typo because you've got katie.baker.ca. Oh, shoot. So you need to go back to your LinkedIn profile after this and update that. Okay. So go to edit profile and then you can make that update and change that. Amazing. So I do want to just say, so we will put links to her Katie's uh, website and her information in the show notes for those of you listening and you can check it out. And I hope this has helped you think a little about your own messaging and your websites as well. And I just want to say thanks again. This is Kathy C. I appreciate your listenership. And remember, if you want to thrive in practice and business, that means taking the time to review your business financials make a plan and price your services and products so that you are making a profit. And Katie Baker is someone who can help you do that. So be sure to reach out to Katie if you're looking for that kind of help with your business. And you'll find her at katiebaker.ca. I'll see you next time. You can find all of our show notes and resources mentioned at marketingyourprivatepractice.com. Be sure to connect with me on Instagram at pepperitmarketing and say hi. I'd love to hear any feedback you have and make sure to rate and review the podcast and hit subscribe on your favorite player so you don't miss any future episodes.